ladies and gentlemen, this is John Perkins Barrymore, your co-host of the Troy Corey Evening Show, coming to you this evening from Hollywood, the film capital of the world, where anything can happen and often does. Wait a minute. Well, uh, remember I promised you something very special? Something very special. Okay, very special. You know I went down to Jackson, uh, Mississippi? That's right, you yeah. just got back. Welcome back. Mm-hmm. How was your trip? No, I see. Now, I think in the wheel, did you not say that uh, all this is to go to Corey, right? Well, the insides of this trunk is to go to Corey. Let's see what we have underneath here. Let's take this okay, out. Okay, Sandy, well, uh, insurance policies, <laughs> too. Oh, okay, can you just sit this on the floor? Okay. Now, I know you've been in here because you had to go in here to find the will. What are some of the other things in here? The most important thing that I found in here, Troy, was this briefcase. Mm-hmm. There are papers written in here by your grandfather proving that he was the inventor of the first wireless radio. Mm-hmm. Let me show you this, first of all. Just hold this up where we can come in and get this. And uh, if you will read that, what does that say, Troy? Well, it says, Nathan Stubblefield broadcast human speech by wireless in 1902 and died two years ago, half starved, penniless, and unattended. And that was the, the father. So the same, the same thing happened to him, did it Some not? must have just uh-huh. duplicated the, the exact... Herb- was this a family picture you saw? Yes, uh, I've seen this picture. This is uh, Bernard, the one who just died. Yeah. And this is the inventor, my grandfather, Nathan B. Stubblefield. This is my father, uh, who's Jack Stubblefield. This is Nathan. And this is Victoria, who died two years, four years ago, didn't mm-hmm. she? That was a sister that, yeah, that lived with him. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh, and this is the radio. You can't see it too well. Uh, he made that out of uh, the telephone. Well, here's some pictures out of yeah. it. Look at this. What he did, the way I understand it, he, he took the telephone, which was naturally invented by Bell, and, and he had to have wires to... Right. The telephone. Well, he took the telephone, cut the wires off, and learned and, and uh, invented the way to send the voice without wires. Mm-hmm. That's, what is this? That's some more. Oh, yeah, it's a moon, yeah. That's a close up. Uh-huh. Where are these inventions now, you think? I don't think they're in here. I, I don't know where they are. They could be. Huh. They could be in the bottom. I've only. What found is this? this is another. Now, this was in the paper. Uh, what does this say? Oh, yeah, this is a, a picture of uh, uh, Nathan, the inventor, with the radio. Here's the first from the steam launch Barth, uh, Barthold, Bartholdi yeah, on the Potomac. Uh, Stubblefield sent the first marine radio telephone message. This is in Georgetown, is the large building. So uh, he sent the first ship to shore broadcast live with a voice. Well, isn't it, see, it really makes you a little ill when you think this great man, and yet his father and uh, he himself. Let's have a picture here. Let's see, uh, Mr. Stubblefield, Mr. Bernard Stubblefield. Uh, how recent is this picture, Ms. Lynch, that we're showing now? Right here. Let's see. Where is it? There it is. How, how recent is this? This was made about six years ago, I would say, in here, and I would not know what it's all about because it pertained to electrical wire, and it would take someone who understands that. What are some of the other things here? Here's one thing that's in particular. It is written by his father back in 1892. It's a true statement of money that he spent uh, on one of his trips to Washington trying to secure his patent. Let's see. I heard he received uh, approximately, well, $75,000. Uh, he received the money from somebody. Mm-hmm. They formed a, a corporation, the way I understand it, and they raised a close to two and a half million dollars, a, a private corporation, which was called the Wireless uh, yeah, well, we just came back back in America. And, and when I opened this trunk, not did I find that only my grandfather invented the radio, but the old fellow who died, Bernard Stubblefield, invented the helicopter. The flying machine. The flying machine, the, the flying helicopter. Machine. And we're going to tell a little bit more about that on segments coming up. Control D that Stubblefield had trying to patent his vibrating telephone. On the back of it, it gives you the history of why he was not able to receive his patent. And that's all written really in his own In his own handwriting. Mm -hmm. And he has beautiful handwriting. Mm -hmm. Now, this is Nathan. This is Nathan, Nathan, the father. Mm -hmm. Uh Uh Why were they in Mississippi, Miss Lynch? You knew them well? Oh, Mr. Barney, as he was so well known in our communities, came here to live with his sister uh, shortly after he retired. He lived in our community uh, for all these number of years, and he's had this with him, but would not allow anyone to see it mm-hmm. until after his death. 
Well, Troy, there's uh, no telling uh, how long it's going to take you to go through all this. I'm going to have to come up to Jackson, Mississippi, and they'll probably be seeing the show for a short uh -uh. Yeah. But anyway, uh, uh, just the document alone has got to be worse. Well, it's got to be worse. Uh, uh, the just... information, maybe it's obsolete today, but it's there. And it's such a shame that this great man, you know, mm -hmm. but he, he, you said, didn't like people. Well, yeah, no, he did not like to be around people. I would like to say this, that Mr. Barney, being an inventor himself, had... Um, lots of inventions of his own that the Mississippi Archives and History has already come down and gotten and they are going over it with a fine tooth comb and we feel like that Barney needs some recognition along with Nathan and we feel like that Mississippi will give him the recognition that he so deserves. Troy, when was the last time you saw him? I saw him, uh, gosh it was uh Five years ago, when Victoria died, this is the last time I saw him. Mm -hmm. And at that time, I asked him if I could open this trunk, and he said, no, no, he says, you can open it when I die. And uh, so here we are, mm -hmm. five years later. And I know you're going to be very anxious to get this trunk and go through it and see what's here, because uh, it has a lot here that you can hand down to, to your family and so mm -hmm. forth. Your father is no longer living, right? Wait a minute. Now, I think in the will, did you not say that uh, all this is to go to court? It's just right. this in value. Right. 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 Let's see what we have underneath here. By this my friend, friend Sammy Payne, when I take my sugar to tea. I'm just a little Jack Horner. This is Vinnie B.R.A. Same teleplay pictures at R&B Video Production. Tune in the good times on the Troy Corey Show tomorrow night at 1130.